Have you ever wondered how it's possible to walk into a store and find a t-shirt for the same price as a gallon of gas? Or a pair of leggings for less than a sandwich? We've grown to expect our clothes at low prices, but have we actually taken the time to think about how these low prices are achieved? I invite you to take a look down at what you're wearing today. Do you remember where you got these clothes? How much you paid for them? Do you know where they were made? Or who made them? Today I'm going to show you exactly how much it costs to make the clothes we wear and the impacts our excessive consumption of inexpensive fashion are having on the planet and the people on it. For my entire life, I've been obsessed with clothes. I use style as a form of self-expression to share my personality with the world around me. And in high school, I started making my own clothes in order to have unique things I wasn't seeing anywhere else. After college, I bought a $100 sewing machine, and I started sewing clothes in my parents' basement and selling them online. As my hobby turned into a business, I became deeply rooted in the handmade world and developed a strong passion for understanding where the things we use every day come from. Today, that hobby has turned into a multi-million dollar clothing brand that focuses on US manufacturing, sustainable fabrics, and ethical labor. Over the last 10 years of working in the fashion industry, I've discovered there is one important clue in determining the impacts of our clothes, and that is the label. In the 1960s, the average American bought less than 25 pieces of clothing, spending the modern equivalent of $4,000 on them. It's about $160 per piece. 95% of those were made in the US. Today, we buy more clothes than ever before. The average American buys 70 pieces of clothing a year, but spends only $1,800 on them, which is an average of $25 a piece and only 2% of those are made in the US. Last week, I found these leggings at a giant fast fashion retailer at the mall for $9.99. Fast fashion is cheap clothing that moves quickly from design to store to meet trends. The fast fashion industry is notorious for low cost and exploitative labor and unsustainable materials because the goal is to manufacture as quickly and cheaply as possible. But it makes you wonder, should leggings cost $9.99? A lot of things about leggings are the same, regardless of where and how they're made. A single piece of clothing involves the work of at least 25 people throughout its entire supply chain. For these leggings, they had at least seven pattern pieces, that were cut out of an athletic fabric, sewn together by a team of three to five people, inspected for quality, tagged, packaged, and shipped to the brand who sold them to a customer, who then will wear them as long as they want or until they fall apart before they discard them. These $10 leggings were made in Bangladesh, which is the global epicenter of fast fashion. Fashion there accounts for nearly 80% of exports, and over 4 million Bangladeshi people work in garment factories. The labor for these leggings costs less than 50 cents. If that sounds shocking to you, it should. So let's look behind the price tag. It's estimated that 98% of garment workers in Bangladesh get paid minimum wage. And minimum wage in Bangladesh is $68 a month. But a livable wage is $332 a month. So simply put, Bangladeshi garment workers are living in extreme poverty and working in dangerous conditions. It's not uncommon for them to put in 16-hour days. And a survey done by the Overseas Development Institute found that 32% of children ages 10 to 14 who are living in the slum settlements of Dhaka, the capital of Bangladesh, are working full-time in garment factories, even though the minimum legal working age is 14. 
In April 2013, over 1,100 garment workers were killed and 2,500 were injured when the Rana Plaza factory in Dhaka collapsed. The eight-story building had visible cracks that had developed in the concrete, and managers disregarded engineering advice to condemn the building. These workers were not protected under labor laws or by the brands they worked for, so hardly any financial assistance was provided for victims or their families. The full list of brands manufacturing at Rana Plaza is still unclear, but the tags of major household names that you have all heard of were found amidst the rubble. While the Rana Plaza factory accident is the deadliest in the history of fashion, it is hardly the first. Leggings and most athletic clothes are made out of synthetic fibers, often polyester. It's a common choice because it's cheap. The fabric for these leggings likely cost $2. And while it's a performance fabric, polyester is made from plastic, which is made from fossil fuels. The annual emissions for one year of polyester production for the fashion industry is the same as the annual emissions of all of the coal-fired power plants in the United States. The fabric is then dyed a process that uses enormous amounts of water and creates enormous waste. The fashion industry accounts for 20% of global wastewater. The Bangladeshi government has declared three major rivers biologically dead due to the impacts of fabric dyeing. This means there is no oxygen and therefore no aquatic life. We're now up to 250 to make these leggings. Add in some packaging, we're at 255. Now we need to get these leggings across the world to a store. For these leggings to get to the store I found them in, they had to travel 10,000 miles through a combination of boat and ground. The cost is nominal, probably a few cents, because entire container ships are filled with this product. But the journey takes about a month and a half. So let's be generous and say this brand paid about $3 to make these $10 leggings. I guess that math makes sense, right? But how do you feel about it? How do you feel knowing somebody got paid less than 50 cents to make them? Now let's look at how much it costs to make a pretty similar pair of leggings in a very different way. Slow fashion is a term often used to describe clothes made at a lower volume with an attention to the manufacturing that includes social and environmental impacts. Many US-based slow fashion companies choose to make their clothes in the US because of labor transparency. So here's how much it costs to make these leggings in the US. $10 for the fabric, typically. While it's also polyester, it's recycled polyester, so no new plastic was made to create this fabric. Instead, post-consumer recyclables like plastic water bottles or fishing nets are melted down to create this fiber. About 25 plastic bottles go into one pair of leggings. Instead of dyeing, this brand uses a process called sublimation, which actually prints artwork onto fabric. It uses non-toxic inks and zero water and fuses the color to the fabric through a gas exchange so it won't wash off or leach into wastewater during the laundry. This process cost the brand $6, plus whatever they might have paid an artist to make the imagery. With our $10 leggings, the lowest cost was labor, but with these leggings, our highest cost was labor. This brand paid $12 to get these cut and sewn in Los Angeles, California, which is the apparel hub of the United States. Factory workers at this factory get paid $22 an hour, which is more than Bangladeshi garment workers make in a week. Tags and labels for these leggings cost around a dollar, and they're also made in Los Angeles, so they don't have very far to travel to get to the factory. Next, it costs a dollar to ship these up to the brand a journey of a truck, which is about 1,000 miles and takes a few days. So our total to make a pair of leggings in the US is about $30. That's 10 times as much as it costs to make a pair of fast fashion leggings. And these leggings will cost the consumer 10 times as much too. They retail for $100, which impacts our ideas about what we do with them when we're done with them. If you paid $10 for leggings, you don't have to wear them a certain number of times before you feel like you've got your money's worth, right? 
it's not a significant amount of money for us to care much about what happens to them. They're likely not made to last, so it's going to be hard to donate or resell them once we're done with them. And if they get a rip or we outgrow them or we stain them, the price point is so low that we can treat them as disposable. In the last 20 years, the amount of clothing being made has doubled, but the amount of times we wear our clothes has decreased by 35%. The average piece of clothing gets worn only seven times before it's discarded. And our disposable fashion has to go somewhere. The average consumer throws away 81 pounds of clothing a year. That's straight to the landfill. And where do these clothes go once they're in the landfill? Well, because they're made of plastic, they're actually not really going anywhere. We're consuming at a rate that's way beyond the speed at which we can come up with solutions to our waste. Now, let's say you paid $100 for a pair of leggings. That's a price point that forces you to care. It's a lot of money. It's a price point that comes with an expectation of quality, durability, longevity. They're likely made very well. They'll last you a very long time. Slow fashion experts advise that we should buy our clothes expecting to wear them at least 35 times. So if we pay $100 for a pair of leggings and we wear them 35 times, they're actually costing us less than $3 each time we wear them. Once we're done with them, perhaps after years of wearing, they're likely still in good condition and holding their value. So we can pass them on to another home. A new wave of resale sites offer opportunities for customers to buy and sell higher priced used clothing to each other. The point of my talk is not to scold you for buying fast fashion. It is very accessible. Nor is it to suggest that you go out and replace your entire closet with expensive clothes from small brands. It's to draw attention to the not so invisible impacts of our overconsumption and to encourage you to sit out trends and build a closet for your personal style, because that's never going out of style. Understanding the labels on our clothes, just like we do with our food, is an important responsibility of being a consumer of fashion. Transparency is not easy to find in the fashion industry, but the price of our clothes can tell us a lot about how they were made if we take the time to read labels and remain curious.